applause. No, it feels great. We worked very hard to to be in this position. I don't. I wouldn't say it's surprising. Um, you know, I know the kind of guys we have in the locker room, and the coaching ch- coaching staff works really hard to put us in in good positions to be successful. We'll move to Danny with the ringer. Hey, Joe, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. So I got two questions for you. First. You have been fantastic against the Blitz this year. I mean, your passer rating is like 20 points higher when you're getting Blitz than when you're not. You had that moment against the Ravens this year where you said, can't zero me. So I'm wondering, do you actually like being Blitz? Like, do you prefer to be Blitzed? You know, I just think it depends on the situation. You know, when you when you Blitz, you have to play one-on-one outside. And the receivers that we have makes my job easy when – when I do get pressured, they win so fast that I'm able to just get them the ball in space. So, you know, those guys make it easy on me. We'll move to Aditi with NFL Network. Hey, Joe. Um, we've talked a lot about how you're diagnosing defenses this year. Brian Callahan was really raving about the way you see the field. Can you tell us what your process was this off season? Was there anything you committed to doing to get better at that? And why does it work so well? I wouldn't say, you know, every off season, I kind of work on a little bit of everything. There's not really one or two specific focuses that I have. Um, you know, seeing the field has always been something that has kind of come naturally to me. I'm pretty good at understanding spatial awareness and where everybody is. Um, and so then if you add that with my preparation, you know, I, I'm able to to diagnose the coverage fairly quickly. Next, we'll have Nate Davis with you. Hi, Joe, you got me? Gotcha. Uh, I just wanted to, it seems like a, a fun topic going into the week is just uh, people talking about your your persona and the swagger and all that, the, the glasses, the chain, et cetera. Can you just talk about from your perspective, does that go back to high school or where did you, where did you cultivate that? Or is that just something that's come naturally to you? But I mean, I think people are pretty interested in just kind of where you get the swagger. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't really consciously think about it. I just wear stuff that I think I would like, you know, it's not like I'm shopping and be like, Oh, everyone would love this. Uh, I just have always kind of not cared what anybody thinks about you know what I wear, what I do. And, I just wear stuff that I like. Next, we'll have John Crick with the Toronto Sun. Hey, Joe. Given that your dad played professional football up in the CFL for several years, two questions on that. Do you have any favorite memories your dad would tell about Canada or the CFL? And secondly, when you left Ohio State, uncertain even about your uh, your college career, was the CFL maybe an option for you? Were you in that in your mindset at some point? You know, he would always tell me stories of, of the Grey Cups that he played in. So that was always fun to fun to hear about. Uh, you know, that was always kind of in the back of my mind if I had chosen to to pursue that route. You know, maybe I, I didn't turn out to be as good as I was. Um, you know, CFL was always in the back of my mind if I had decided to go there. Thank you. Ben with New York Times. Good morning, Joe. Uh, You seem to really enjoy playing quarterback and not just the football aspect, but sort of like the spoils and the rewards that come with it from your comments after the game against um, the Chiefs about about the necklace. And there's that seemed to be just that personality about you that uh, the previous reporter asked. And I'm kind of wondering what what you like about the entirety of being able to play that position and what it represents to you in the NFL? You know, I think my favorite part of it is, well, two things. On the field, you know, I get the ball, get the ball in my hands every play. You know, quarterback is the one position that can really impact the game on every single play. So I really enjoy that part. And the second is, you know, just cultivating relationships in the locker room. You know, I've, I'm from small town, rural Ohio. And, you know, I think what's great about football is, you can create relationships with people that you never would have had a relationship with otherwise. You know, I'm, whether it's a guy from Chicago or Alabama or 
you know, Atlanta, you know, those, those relationships are rare and exciting for, for people that come from where I'm from. And, you know, I, I would say that's my favorite part. Thank you. Kelly Hanlon with TBC. Hey, Joe, last time I actually talked to you was at the NFL Combine. So it's awesome that, you know, pretty quick turnaround to talk to you at the Super Bowl. But I have to ask, since then, you've appointed many nicknames. Which one is your favorite? <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. I don't know. I have a lot of them. Um, just call me Joe. That's <laughs> whatever. Whatever anybody wants to call me is OK with me. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Andrew with the mirror. Hi, Joe, mate. Massive congratulations on reaching the Super Bowl. What an incredible achievement. Thank you. Uh, your story is pretty remarkable. You know, national champion and Heisman Trophy winner with LSU, number one overall pick in 2020. Bounce back from your ACL injuries. Take the Bengals, you know, your local team, your Ohio's Mr. Football in 2014. And you've gone to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1988 for them. I guess my question is, with the match taking place in Hollywood, does it feel like you're living a classic movie script? And have you had time to pinch yourself yet ahead of the game? You know, I haven't really thought about any of that. I'm... I've been focused on game prep and you know trying to eliminate as many distractions as I can. Uh, you know, I wish you know, the Super Bowl in LA, you know, everyone has all these distractions. You're going to get pulled in a lot of different directions. And I think, you know, the team that handles those distractions the best is going to end up winning the game. Thanks, ma'am. Emily with NBC. Unmute. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Hello? Can you hear me? I got you. Oh, okay. Uh, hi, this is Emily from Access Hollywood. I'm sure you know The Rock posted a photo of you and him side by side in similar looks, but who do you think wore it better? And who is your celeb crush? <laughs> um, I would say, I'd say The Rock probably wore it better. He probably filled that turtleneck out a little better than I did at the time. Uh, celeb crush growing up? I don't know. I don't know if I really ever had one. Uh, no celeb crush. Favorite tough. actress? A tough question. Uh, I'm going to skip that one. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Chris Ryan, WGIR. Hey, Joe, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, how would you describe, you know, what your mindset needs to be when you're playing your best? Because it seems like there's like that calm, cool, collected aspect to your game. But is there, you know, is there other stuff that creates that space that you need to be in to have success? You know, I think the key to you know, finding that is just maintaining the same mindset that you have through the lows as the highs. You got to stay, stay level headed. You know, if you get too high, you're you know, going to get tired and you're not going to be able to sustain that. And if you get too low, you know, you're going to let those mistakes snowball. So I think the key is just keeping the, the same level head through everything. Martin Rogers, Fox Sports. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very good, thanks. Um, obviously, you're one of a, a number of young and exciting um, quarterbacks who have come into the league over the over the past few seasons. Obviously, you're focused on what you're doing and what the Bengals are doing, but do you kind of enjoy being part of this this new wave, if you like, young quarterbacks who are who are going out and and kind of taking the game to the next level? Yeah, I do. You know, I think with all of us playing the way that we're playing, it's a great product for the NFL. It's uh, great for the fans. You know, you quarterback play is what drives the league, in my opinion. And, you know, we have a lot of really good young players that are, I think are going to be here for a long time and, and continue to play well. And that's exciting to for me as a fan. You know, when I get home from a game on Sundays, I, I enjoy watching football, too. And that's exciting to watch guys like Mahomes and Lamar and Justin Herbert. Um uh, Kyla Murray, all these young guys. You know, it's, it's fun for me to watch as well as well as be a, a be a, be a part of it. Thanks, Jim. Jack WFUV. 
Hey, Joe, last week you spoke about how Kid <clears throat> Cudi and LeBron James reached out to you and how surreal that was. Have there been any other people that you look up to that, that reached out since those encounters? Uh, you know, I haven't been on social media as much since, you know, the, the beginning of the week, so I haven't checked in a while. Uh, my phone hasn't been blown up as much, so that's been nice. Um, just trying to eliminate those distractions. But, yeah, the, the you know, like I said, the social part of, you know, the position that I'm in is it's crazier than the football part to me. Jack Pohl. Joe, looking back at your high school, obviously you're a grown man, mature now, but uh, is it the same jitters? Is it the same, you know, you've obviously played uh, in big games in high school. Does, does any of that stay the same or does everything change as you go to college and pro? No, it really, I mean, obviously the, the players get better and, you know, the scheme gets better and everything, but, you know, at the end of the day, your mindset stays the same. You know, when I played in the state championship in, in high school, it, feels the same as playing in the Super Bowl does now. Um, just, you know, at that moment in my life, that was the biggest game that I had ever played in. And, you know, so the everything kind of feels the same. I've just had more reps in those situations, so I'm probably even a little calmer. Panini? Hi, Joe. Congratulations on making it to the Super Bowl. Thank you. Well, my question is, what sort of advantages do you feel like you have with Jamar having played with him in college? Now, that's a really good question. Um, you know, every, whenever you have, you know, you have to get to know a new receiver, you know, it's always tough at the beginning because you have to you know, learn how he's running routes. He needs to learn the velocity and placement of your, of your footballs. And, you know, we already had that coming in and we already knew how to talk about the routes that we missed and we would get it corrected very quickly. Uh, so it's a, a big advantage when you already have a relationship with, you know, a new receiver that you have. Thank you. Good luck at the Super Bowl. Thank you. Teresa Walker. Joe, good morning. Uh, good morning. Finishing your career at in the LSU, in the SEC, getting to a college football playoffs and winning a national championship, how much did that maybe help your transition to the NFL? And when you look around the roster, there's a bunch of SEC guys on that roster. How much does that SEC experience maybe help all of you uh, at this stage of the NFL season? Yeah, I would say it helps a lot. I would say guys that have played you know, in the SEC and the Big Ten, um, they have uh, a better feeling of what the NFL is going to be like. You know, the speed of the game, the physicality of it, uh, than guys that might have played at smaller schools. Uh, so I would say that's an advantage that we have. Al Butler, UPI. Oh, hi, Joe. Congrats. Thank you. Um, I was curious this year, um, there's some young coaches here in the Super Bowl. I kind of wanted to know what the impact was on uh, – on Zach's youth with the Bengals? And was there a certain point um, this season where you guys kind of felt like you should leave what happened in the past um, with the franchise as far as struggles in the playoffs and you guys are looking at this as, a, as just a new team and, and looking to make your own, uh, set your own path as a franchise? You know, I would say nobody even really realizes how young Zach is really. Um, you know, he does a great job of commanding the room. And I would say the only time you, you notice it is when he's, you know, relating to the players. He does a great job of, of doing that like you, you know, would expect he would. And, you know, honestly, we've never even spoken about the, the playoff drought once this whole season. You know, I think we had a we got, we have a really young team that doesn't really even understand, you know, the historical significance of, of what we're doing. We're just out there playing football and, no, getting better while we're doing it. Thank you. Stephen Holder. Hey, Joe, can you hear me? I got you. <laughs> cool. Hey, um, you know, you're a smart guy, so I think you probably get this. I'm wondering if you have any sort of um, perspective on these are such elusive opportunities. 
you know, getting to a Super Bowl, and here you are in year two doing this. Um, do you kind of have any sort of perspective on just, you know, how this has happened so fast, but at the same time, you have no idea if and when it ever happens again. Just what do you think about when you sort of, you know, collect all that? Yeah, you got to take advantage of your opportunities when you get there. You know, you see guys who go an entire career without ever, ever even getting to the Super Bowl. So, you know, when you do get there, you really have to, you know, hunker down and take advantage of those opportunities. And you know, I think we have the team that's capable of doing that. We have a really, really good week of practice and, you know, excited to iron some things out next week in practice. And you know, I think we're doing a great job of eliminating the distractions that come with the Super Bowl. And, you know, it's just going to get heavier when we get to L.A. But you know, I think we have the guys that are capable of doing it. Paul, The Athletic. Hey, Joe. Uh, I'm curious about your relationship with Andrew Whitworth. I know you guys uh, knew each other. and you Did you spend time with him or, or stay at his house when you were out in L.A.? And how did he help you understand kind of the landscape of the Bengals when you got drafted? I did, yeah. When I got hurt and I was out, I lived about 40 minutes from where he was living, and we were both hurt at the same time. So you know, I would go over to his house. And then watch the games on Sunday. We did that. You know, I think I spent my birthday at his house and I also spent his birthday at his house. And so that was kind of, you know, uh, a cool thing that he did for me, uh, reaching out to me and kind of making me feel, making the rehab process a little easier, you know, being in California away from, you know, a lot of people that were close to me. He kind of took me in and you know, we had we had some good times hanging out and watching watching football and talking about the Bengals and LSU and all that. So he's become a good friend. What did you learn about the Bengals? What did you learn about the Bengals from him that maybe you didn't know? You know, I'll keep those conversations private. <laughs> but uh, you know, he had a lot of insight that I think was helpful for me. Jim, ESPN. Hey, Joe, um, I know you mentioned earlier that you guys are too young to have a sense of the history of all this, but as an Ohio native, you must have some sense of what it's like to be a Bengals fan, and it's sort of been a long-suffering time for a lot of them, at least recently. Um, what sort of sense do you get of what this means to Bengals fans, and what does it mean to you as an Ohio native to be the quarterback to bring them back to a Super Bowl? Yeah, being from Ohio and being the quarterback of the Bengals is something that I'm really proud of. You know, growing up, they're really weren't a lot of Bengals fans in, in, in high school and in middle school and, and growing up, it was all Steelers and Browns. Um, and then there were, you know, a few Bengals fans here and there that kind of got made fun of a little bit. So I think as a team, we're excited to put a product on the field that the fans are proud of and that kind of gives them bragging rights. They haven't had that in a while. So uh, you know, I'm excited to give that to them. Garrett with Build. Um, hi, um, this is third um, Super Bowl for the Bengals. The first two were against the 49ers. Um, are you glad that is now not against the 49ers because there were two losses, or would you rather have played against them to revenge uh, your team? Well, I think that you know the first two were were in the past. Um, I would have enjoyed playing against my. You know, I got some good good friends on the 49ers that I would, would have enjoyed playing against. Uh, but, you know, whoever's on the, that other sideline will will go out and compete. Cassidy Wood. Hey, Joe. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, so I cover uh, the tri-state area. I cover Athens as well in the Plains. Um, and you haven't been quiet about – you know, your guys' mutual support for one another. So I guess my question is, what's what's maybe a message uh, that you could give to the people back home now that you're at the Super Bowl? Well, they helped make me who I am today. You know, I wouldn't be here without all the people that, that supported me in, in Athens. And, you know, I'm still in contact with a lot of those people and try to, you know, help the area out in any way that I can. And, you know, I hope I'm making everybody proud. Jim Cross. Hey, Joe. Jim with ASAP Network. You know, I'm down here in Baton Rouge. I've been here all week. And what does it mean to you that 
Baton Rouge has embodied Cincinnati South basically because of their love for you. Yeah, I've had some cool stories of people, you know, watching my games on cell phones in a in a basketball arena, and you know, nobody nobody was really paying attention to the basketball game in front of them. They were all watching our game on on their cell phone and going crazy when we won. So that was, you know, I've just had a couple of cool stories like that. And it means a lot to me that, you know, the people in Baton Rouge are still supporting me the way they did when I played for them. Ben, Boston Globe. Joe, congrats on making it this far and having a terrific season. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to, to have this franchise be, uh, you know, have the number one pick and be two and 14 the year before you get there, to now have them in the Super Bowl two years later. Um, how much have you kind of heard that? And and what's it been like to be part of uh, uh, an organizational turnaround like that? You know, that's not really even something that we think about. You know, we're in the, we're in the present. And, you know, what happened in the past happened in the past. Um, obviously, we weren't a very good team for several years. And, you know, now we're, we're in the Super Bowl and we – you know, you got to give credit to the to the organization for building the team that we have. You know, they've done a great job in free agency and in the draft of bringing in players that have fit the fit the culture that we're creating and also are, are taking care of business on the field. Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, yeah, Joe, just wondering uh, the loss that you had uh, to the Browns in Cincinnati. Uh, it seems like maybe that would, was some sort of a turning point for you where you realized that you had to, you know, perhaps diversify, <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe not rely on Jamar, you know, as much as, as you had been or something. So just wondering, uh, was, was that game one in which you set your mind to, uh, you were going to get things changed up for the rest of the season? No, I've never let anything other than the, the defensive look dictate where I'm going to go with the football. Um, I Obviously, that wasn't a, a great game for us. I think, if anything, we learned that we didn't, we can't turn the ball over the way we had been. And, you know, we've been the best team in the league the last six or seven weeks of not turning the ball over and turnover margin. So I think that's really, you know, the one thing that has kind of turned us around. Thank you. Neil Reynolds, Sky Sports. Hey Joe, this is Neil Reynolds from Sky Sports in the UK. Um, I wonder if you can tell me if you've always been a confident player or if that's grown as you've grown as a player. And also, do you think, just a two-part question, has the team kind of grown in confidence as you've gone through this playoff run, pulling off all these close wins? You know, I've kind of always been a confident player. You know, more so now than I probably ever have been before um, because I've feel like I've proven to myself that I can play at a high level at this at this level of football. Um, you know, at, at Ohio State, I was still confident, but not as confident as maybe I had been in the past and will, would have been in the future. You know, I wasn't playing. And, you know, those are times where you really learn a lot about, you know, yourself as a player and a person. And keeping confidence high in those situations is is tough. And... You know, I think as a quarterback, it's really important to exude that confidence, not only in yourself, but in all of your teammates. And I think, you know, the quarterback sets the tone for the culture in the locker room. And you know, I try to be that kind of player in person for, for everybody here. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Amy Just. Hey, Joe. Um... Piggybacking off of an earlier question, uh, what has Louisiana meant to your journey? Um, and what does it mean to you to represent LSU along with Jamar and Tyler? I mean, LSU means everything to me. They gave me the, the opportunity to put myself in, in this position to be talking to everybody today. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that opportunity if, if I didn't go down there and, you know, work really hard for, for what I got. And, you know, the fans really embraced me as one of their own. And, you know, I tried to do the best I could when I was there of representing LSU and Louisiana in, in, a, in a very good way. And I think, you know, the fans really appreciate when 
somebody from the outside comes in and really embraces their culture and and all things like that. Thank you. Jeff Hobson. Hi, Joe. What's up, Hobbs? I am not from Access Hollywood, uh, <laughs> but I wanted to I wanted to ask you about, it was a, probably about a year ago you started uh, working with Nick. And I know how arduous, and I, and I know how arduous the journey was. And I just wonder if you could run through your relationship with him and just, and just how tough it was. Yeah, it was a long and, and grueling process. And, you know, Nick really helped me get back to, you know, the player that I was before. You know, I wouldn't be having the season that I had without, without him and, you know, all the hard work that he put in. I really appreciated everything that he did for me. You know, he put vacations and all that on hold to help bring me back to the player that I was pre-injury. And so I, I know I owe a lot to Nick and, and his hard work this offseason. How much time do you think you spent with them compared to maybe family members, girlfriends? I mean, what do you, what do you, you know? Oh, way more than, way more than any, everybody else. You know, I saw Nick for two or three hours every day for eight months. Thanks, Joe. James Tatum. Hey, Joe, how's it going today, man? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm just wondering because you guys as a team have been playing very confident and you have a very confident, charismatic uh, way you play the game. So how do you feel like you rub off on your other teammates and help your team have the highest confident level that they can have? You know, I think it starts with, you know, building that locker room culture, everyone having, you know, the utmost belief in everybody else that they're going to get their job done. You know, I think, you know, as a quarterback, I'm not afraid to make mistakes because I know our defense is going to pick us up if I do. And so that allows me to go out and play freely and not be scared to throw an interception or miss a throw because I know our defense is going to pick us up. And I think, you know, our defense plays the same way, knowing that the offense is going to pick them up if they're down. And so I think we just play great team football together that, and that starts with, with, the lock, with the culture in the locker room. Awesome, Joe. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Eric Wilson. Hey, Joe, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Um, kind of piggybacking off what you just said, can you speak to the culture that both you and Zach Taylor have kind of created with this Cincinnati Bengals team and what has led you from, you know, 2-14 and 14 to where you're currently at? Yeah, I think – you know, one, the organization did a great job of, you know, bringing in free agents that have been obviously great for us on the field, but even better for us in the locker room and doing the same thing through the draft. And I think, you know, that's where it starts. And then as quarterback, you know, your job is to be an extension of coaching staff in the locker room. And so, you know, whatever Zach says to the team, your job is to amplify it throughout the rest of the, the locker room. And, you know, I'm not the only one that's doing that. We have, you know, great leaders in that locker room to kind of permeate that culture throughout the entire building. And really, you know, that's rare, a rare thing. Um, not, I haven't been a lot of places that have that. And I think that's really what breeds championships is, you know, me being able to sit down with, you know, I feel comfortable sitting down with anybody in the locker room at lunch and having a 10 minute conversation with them. And, you know, it's really rare that, you know, everybody feels comfortable doing that. Laurel, Daytona Daily. Thanks. Um, Dayton Daily News. But uh, <laughs> you, you've, a lot has been said about um, T Higgins and Jamar Chase since they've been drafted, but what does Tyler Boyd mean to you specifically? And, and what has he done for that wide receiver group just with his experience being with this team for, for a while now? Yeah. Tyler is a very underrated part of our offense. I wish he would get more love because he's you know, one of the best slot guys in the league. He really understands what we're trying to do on each play and he's always where I expect him to be. Um, and he, never drops a ball. And so he's a guy that I can rely on in critical moments to go and make plays for me. And 
you know, he's a great locker room guy as well, just like I was talking about. So you know, he's a very invaluable part of, you know, what we're building. Mac Brown. Hi, Joe. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, Joe, talk to me about your growth and development in the NFL and your relationship with offensive coordinator Brian Callahan. Yeah, I think, you know, just as you get more reps you, know, you start to see a lot of different defenses and see what works and what doesn't. And, you know, I've started, you know, my, the reps are accumulating. And so I'm feeling more and more comfortable out there against different defenses and, you know, what what defensive look is going to take away the, the play that we have and get into a play that might work. Uh, and my relationship with Brian is is great, just like it is with – all of our, our offensive coaches and you know, I really feel comfortable expressing my opinion on certain plays and you know I really appreciated that they take my opinion into account when formulating the game plan and you know it's worked out for us. In terms of music and motivation, who do you listen to before you take the field? Kid Cuddy all day. Cuddy. All right. Rolling with Cuddy. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Grant James. Hey, Joe, thanks for your time. You got it. Was there a moment this season, not necessarily a, a win or a big play, what have you, where you just kind of got the inkling that maybe this team had this kind of special uh, run in them? I mean, maybe it was just a look somebody gave you in the eye or something somebody spoke up and said during a meeting, what have you? I think when we went into Baltimore, and won the way that we did early in the year. I think we knew that we could be a really good team. You know, early in the, early in the year, we weren't super consistent. We had, you know, big wins and bad losses. And, you know, as a young team, sometimes you're going to go through that. But, you know, we came out the other side and we've been playing our best football when it mattered most. Which team do you think has the most pressure? The one who has very visibly gone all in on the trade market and gets to play really close to home or the one who is uh, sort of looking to uh, shock everybody and look like have some fun along the way? <clears throat> you know, I'm not really not really thinking about that. You know, the pressure's on everybody. It's Super Bowl. You know, we're both looking, on, looking to go out there and get the victory. It's going to be hard fun. Thanks for <clears throat> having fun with it. Tony Grossi. Hey, Joe, can you hear me? Thank I got you. you. Thank you. Uh, real, two quick ones. One, so who do, did you root for as a kid in Athens? And the second question is, uh, like most number one picks, you came into a losing situation. Prior to the draft, there was a lot of conversation. You know, Joe should uh, pull an Eli Manning and say, I'm not playing for the Bengals, whatever. There was, there was some of that going on. Why did you never do that? Did you ever think of it? Was it beyond any comprehension of you doing that? Um, I was actually a Saints fan because I was a big fan of Drew Brees. So I was a Saints fan in Ohio. Um, and then, no, I never, never thought about telling the Bengals not to draft me or anything like that. Um, I was just happy to be in the position that I was in, you know, being the potential number one pick. That was exciting for me. I would never throw that opportunity away. Thanks, Joe. Good luck. Ben Shulman. Hi, Joe. Uh, ben Shulman, WJPZ. Thanks so much for the time. Uh, a lot of people have made a big deal about your personality this season and kind of your confidence. Uh, how much do you pay attention to that stuff and how much do you play into it or is it just kind of natural? I don't know. It's uh, I try to be myself to the media and I think you know, people kind of appreciate that. Um, I just, you know, I don't really think about it too much. You know, I answer questions honestly. I wear some crazy stuff sometimes, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's it's all about what you do on the field. And so I've I work really hard to put myself in good positions to play really well. Just to follow up, how have you you know used your confidence to be you know such a leader in this locker room at such a young age? Yeah, I think at, at quarterback, you know, confidence might be the the most important trait that you have and I think your preparation really makes or breaks whether you're going to have confidence in yourself or not 
you know, I wouldn't have as much confidence in myself if I, you know, didn't work hard in the off season and didn't watch any film throughout the week and went out and had bad practices and didn't care. But, you know, I know I work really hard to put myself in good positions. And I also know that, you know, that everybody else on our team and in our coaching staff works really hard to put everybody in good positions to go and make plays on Sundays. So that's why I have you know, the most confidence in our guys. Thank you. Mitch McCartney. Hey, Joe, how you doing this morning? Good, how are you? Good. So, um, obviously, you know, you were held back there at Ohio State not getting playing time. And I just want to know, how much of your young career do you owe to Ed Orgeron and the LSU Tigers for going down there and doing what you did? Yeah, you know, I really wasn't very good coming into college. And I knew that I was going to have to get better. I came from a really small school in high school, and it was kind of a uh, – a culture shock when I got to Ohio State and realized how good everybody was. Uh, so I knew I wasn't going to play early, but I worked really hard and they helped develop me to the player that I am today. So I owe Ohio State quite a bit. But then, you know, Coach O gave me the opportunity to continue to build my skills and, you know, show them off to the world. And so I owe Coach O my, my whole career because, you know, without him and without LSU, I wouldn't be sitting here today. We got something. Rachel Lindsay. All right, we got some. Yes. Okay. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Very, very good. Um, okay. I think it's been really fun to see these old tweets come up on social media where you talk about bettering yourself as a player and going to camps and getting your name out there. Fast forward to now, you're on this stage where you are, uh, which is such an accomplishment. What would you say to your younger self? Or better yet, what would you say to the young, you know, players that are coming up that are looking up to you um, and giving them advice? Yeah, I would, I would say focus less on, you know, all the media camps and stars and looking good in front of, you know, all the media at, at you know, these camps that don't really mean anything to college coaches, I would say you know, go to the individual schools' camps, you know, go to Ohio State's camp, go to LSU's camp, you know, go to Cincinnati's camp, you know, don't, don't worry about all these elite 11s and, and all that, you know, focus on getting better, focus on, you know, not, don't, don't have a workout and go and post it on Instagram the next day and then go and sit on your butt for four days and everyone thinks you're working hard, but you're really not, you know, work in silence, don't, don't show everybody what you're doing, you know, let your let your your game on Friday nights and Saturday nights and Sunday nights show all the hard work that you put in. Don't worry about you know all that social media stuff. Right, and you've already shared your jersey with with Kid Cudi. What else are you looking forward to sharing with fellow Ohioans and just as you're taking them on this journey? Well, I hope we can bring bring everybody a Super Bowl. That would be that would be the most exciting thing for him. I think. Ryan Campbell. Good morning, Joe. Um, just wanted to ask, um, what has the impact of Dan Pitcher been on you early in your career? And, you know, what's it been like working with him so far so early on to get to your point now? I couldn't have asked for a better quarterback coach. He really understands what we're trying to do and you know, comes up with a great plan for, for me to go out and be successful on, on game days. And, you know, he also, when I need to, to vent a little bit, he sits there and listens to me. And so that's, you know, you have a coach that you know isn't gonna put you down and and lecture you all the time. Sometimes as a coach, you just need to to listen to a player vent a little bit, and you know he not only does that, but comes up with you know if I ever have a question, he comes up with the answer right on the spot. And so that's you know, I really couldn't have asked for a better situation. Awesome, thank you, Chris Rankle. Hey, Joe, uh, you want to treat every game like it's another game, but this is kind of the biggest game there is in football. I'm wondering, with all your relationships you have with prior guys who have played in this game, have they given you any specific advice about how to handle this stage and playing on this stage? Yeah, you just keep hearing about trying to eliminate the distractions of the Super Bowl and you know, being able to you know, focus in on what you need to do every day at practice to get better and then 
you know, handle the media stuff when you need to handle it, but you know, try to try to put all that stuff on the back burner and let everyone else handle your tickets. You know, just focus on what you need to do. Thanks, Joe. Float is on Germany. Hi, Joe. This is Phil Hauser from the Zone Germany. Uh, congratulations, making it to the Super Bowl. Thank you. Uh, I have one question regarding also your receiving core. Um, last year, you, you, in comparison to this year, you doubled your numbers regarding the big plays, completions and yards per pass. How do you see this development? Well, I think, one, we drafted a guy named Jamar Chase. He's been pretty unbelievable for us with those big plays. And then, you know, T has really become one of the best receivers in the game down the field, running past people, jump balls. And so I really have, you know, those guys to, to credit for the, that yards per attempt. You know, those guys have been incredible. And then the offensive line has given us, you know, enough time to make those plays. So, you know, credit to those guys. All right. Thank you. Franco with the Spanish Bowl. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Okay. Knowing how the match against the Titan went, how do you think the matchups against the Rams powerful defense line will go? I can repeat this. You, you cut yes. out a little bit. Can you start again? Yes, yes, sorry. Knowing how the match against the Titans went, how do you think the matchup against the Rams powerful defensive line will go? Yeah, they're they're a very good defensive front. You know, it's going to be a challenge for our guys, but you know they've worked really hard to put themselves in in this position. And I know that you know our coaching staff has a great plan for them that they're going to be able to go out and execute. Uh, but obviously, guys like Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Don Miller are guys that are going to get pressure. So it's going to be how one I handle the pressure, how I'm able to get the ball out of my hands and get to get it to my playmakers in space, and two you know, how we're, how we're going to be able to handle, handle them up front. And I might, you know, have the utmost confidence in our, in our offensive line to, to make it happen. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Tino, Spectrum News One. Hey, Joey. Um, I just asked Jamar to rank his top five guys on the team. And I'm sorry to let you know that you didn't make the cut. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, and then uh, he gave you about a 7.5 on the style rate right now uh, with room for improvement. Uh, I'm sorry. When you said, when you said to rank what I didn't hear, you cut out a little bit. You didn't, you didn't make the top five on the team. Uh, top he gave five you a seven what? point uh, of most stylish guys. Oh, well, that's pretty team. disappointing. You know, he <laughs> gives me a lot of compliments in how I dress. So that's, I might have to talk to him about that one. But yeah, uh, obviously you've been asked this a million times, uh, you know, between you guys, um, you know, and your college connection, but it just seems to be growing more and more. How important is it for, for you and Jamar to, to essentially get off in this game and get off to a fast start to, to pick up this win and bring Cincinnati for a Super Bowl? Yeah, I think, you know, just going into the game, trying to figure out how they're going to play him. You know, some, some teams feel comfortable about – playing them one-on-one -on -one and other teams don't. So we're going to have to see um, if they try to take Jamar away. We have T and Tyler and, and our tight ends and our running backs. So, and we have a lot of weapons that are going to go out there and make plays. And then uh, just, just one more, uh, obviously you bleed Ohio. So um, I think the nation has kind of uh, rallied around uh, the Bengals this year. Do you feel like you guys have the support of the nation? in this game heading into the Super Bowl? And what does it mean, uh, the Ohio against the world mentality? Yeah, I think it's been exciting for us to see the Bengals in the news a lot. You know, growing up, it was you – nobody know, really, really ever talked about the Bengals too much. And I think it's exciting for us, exciting for the city that, you know, the Bengals are starting to – you know, people are starting to realize that we're a really good team and an exciting team as well. This will be the last one column with Irish NFL. Hi, Joe. Greetings from Dublin, Ireland. The Bengals have a massive fan base over on this little green island. Really? Oh, yeah, big, uh, cool. big fan base over here. 
look, you come from a long heritage of uh, great athletes. I know you talked about your grandmother, I think, dropped 82 points in a basketball game at one point. Can you talk to us a little bit about the importance of family in, in your journey? Yeah, I have, you know, the best family I could ask for. I've been through a lot in in my football career. I know I'm a young guy in the NFL, but you know, I've been through high school and college and, you know, been through a lot of adversity and, you know, I've really leaned on my family to help me through those moments. Um, you know, my, my family has been there every single step of the way and I couldn't, couldn't have asked for, for a better family to help me through those really tough moments. And then obviously the genetics part is pretty good too. Brilliant. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. That's everything from us. Appreciate your time. Awesome. Thanks. This is no, that's not which one he's going on yet. We're going in his last one. Hello. So, 